I'm Michael Tressler and welcome to the first video in a short series on the Microsoft Teams Rooms resource account. We're talking about the license, the Microsoft Teams Rooms license, not necessarily the Microsoft Teams Rooms devices because the Teams Rooms license works for hot desking on Teams display. It's the license recommended or required for Teams panels. It is the license recommended for uh, conference phones, and also the license for Teams Rooms on Surface Hub. So it touches many devices. So the reason you use this license is one, because it's uh, required. It's the only supported license in pretty much all those cases. And it's less expensive, which is always good. So that's what we're going to talk about is how to set this up correctly. There's a, a lot of variables here. There's the way I love to see it, which is just straight native Azure Online, though if you have Exchange Hybrid, that could cause some problems because they're technically two different. But we'll talk about that in a later video. Today, we're just going to talk about the simplest, using Microsoft 365 Admin, using as much web tool stuff as possible. We're going to have to do some PowerShell. If you're uh, new to PowerShell, don't worry about it. I'm going to walk you right through it and show you how to set up the tools I use how to install the modules and all of that. So video one of the resource account series is using the Microsoft 365 admin to primarily to create the resource account. The easiest way to create an account is using Microsoft 365 admin center because you have to use minimal PowerShell and we like pointing and clicking. The first thing to do is uh, click on resource, uh, re re um, show all, and then you'll see resources. I like to click the pin. That way, when I come back to Microsoft 365 Admin Center in the future, I can find resources and it saves me the click on show all. I'll click on rooms and equipment, and from here, I will click add resource. We have two choices, room or equipment. We're going to stay with room because we're going to create an account that works with uh, the Microsoft Teams Rooms license. So I'm going to give it a name of like town view dash conference room eight. Eight seems like a good number. And uh, the email, uh, it doesn't work because of the spaces. Also, I like to have naming conventions. Naming conventions are super important. So here it's MTR for Microsoft Teams Rooms, TVW for town view, and then conference zero eight. Naming conventions are super important. Uh, not just because you can see them, you know, more easily when browsing Azure Active Directory or your or regular Active Directory and things like that. But with Azure Active Directory, there is the concept of dynamic groups. Dynamic groups add members based off a certain attribute, and that attribute can be part of the username. So if the username has MTR dash, add it to our Teams Rooms dynamic group. Now it doesn't have to be MTR dash, it can be TR dash, you can put something at the end. So if you just want to put like, you know, 777 uh, or whatever. So any, any uh, user account that ends with dash 777, put that in our dynamic group for Teams Rooms. It doesn't matter what you use. I just use MTR dash because hey, it's a lab and MTR dash is unique in my environment. Capacity, this is for like capacity counting. So if you have a camera on your Teams Rooms that can count the number of people in the room uh, and the, the, the size of the room is sized for five people, I would put a five here. If a sixth person walks in, a banner will pop up on the display and any paired teams panels and say, hey, the room is full, uh, somebody leave. It's a health and safety thing primarily, but uh, it could be a fire hazard and, and other things. I guess that's health and safety too, isn't it? Uh, I leave these blank. Phone number doesn't do what you think it does. This does not assign a phone number to the account. So don't think you're assigning a phone number by putting any value in there. Clicking save, this will now go through its machinations and create a Microsoft Exchange resource account of type room. Again, we're creating a Microsoft Exchange resource account, which is why we call these Teams Rooms resource accounts. I'm gonna click on edit booking options so we can see what it has done for us. Kindly, this already enables auto accept meeting requests. So when you invite a conference room or if you're using this account for something like a Teams display with hot desking, when you invite the hot desk Teams display to, uh, you know, I, I, I wanna use the Teams display 
Thursday from 2 to 4 p.m. If it's available, it will automatically accept the meeting request. And if it's not available, it'll auto reject the meeting request. So in almost every case, we want to do that, have the auto accept it, and it sets it up for us automatically, which is nice. Allow repeating meetings. So every Monday at 2 o'clock, if you want to have a meeting, you know, that's a repeating meeting. Up to you, up to you as the administrator, if you want to permit repeating meetings or not. I don't have an opinion. There's no best practice. It's how your organization works. Allow scheduling only during work hours. So within exchange for mailboxes, there is the concept of working hours. So I could say uh, between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. are the working hours for this conference room. And if someone were to book the conference room at 8 o'clock p.m., Sorry for those of uh, outside, 7 a.m. to 1900. And if I were to schedule the conference room at 2000, uh, 8 p.m., that's outside of the working hours, and now the room cannot be booked. The default is to allow people to book anytime they want. So if you do want to come in at 2 a.m., 2 in the morning, and um, schedule and, and have a scheduled meeting, more power to you. But again, feel free to change this. Automatically decline meetings outside of limits, and these are the limits. We, I don't know we, if it's a recommendation, but the default is six months in advance, so right? 180 days is six months. That's so people don't book meetings two years in the future, and then you have to make some changes to the conference room, right? Redesign, add new equipment, do whatever you need to do. There are fewer long-term meetings you may have to cancel or rearrange. Up to you. Set it to a year. Set it to 90 days. I, I Whatever your organization does, that's cool. Same with booking duration by default the longest meeting you can schedule is 24 hours so one day now some people may want to book the room for five days so they could do a recurring meeting right every re recur monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday from 8 a.m to 5 p.m that's one way to do it another way to do it is just to book 120 hours which is five days so you, you book from midnight on monday to midnight on Friday evening or technically Saturday morning. So you can do that. Or uh, like I like, uh, but the, no meeting should be longer than a half hour. So set that to, th well, it's in hours. So uh, 0.5. <laughs> I don't know. I've never tried that. Uh, set it to one. And that way nobody will have these long, arduous meetings. So that uh, these are the defaults. I'm just going to leave them as is because my organization is a default. We're, we're a very default organization. So... We've now created a Microsoft Exchange resource account. Now this does create a user account in the background. So we can see that user account by going to users, clicking on active users. And somewhere down here, I should see Townview Conference Room 8. Here it is, Townview Conference Room 08. Let me click on that. Now we need to do two things specifically. One, assign a license and two, set the password. And I could click on the key here to reset the password. But since I have this pane open here, I'll just go ahead and click on it right there and I am going to type in a password that is unique to this conference room and leave these uh, uh, leave these don't don't check these require this user to change the password when they first sign in if you're signing in on uh, one of the windows teams rooms windows there is no facility to pop up and uh, ask you to change your password that that GUI doesn't exist so you're never going to be able to successfully sign in and you're the administrator, so ostensibly, uh, you, you know the password. The, the password change is nice when I, I create a default password, send it to an end user, and I, I don't, I shouldn't know that end user's password. Then the end user gets prompted. We don't really have an end user here. We have a kind of a service account we're creating, this resource account. So we'll just leave that unchecked. So uh, password has been reset. Let's go back and let's assign a license. So I'll go to licenses and apps. Uh, we're talking about assigning Teams rooms, uh, creating Teams rooms accounts, uh, which can, uh, uh, repeated, can be used for Teams displays, Teams panels, Teams rooms on Android, Windows, and Surface Hub. So there's my license. Now, if you want to assign a phone number and you're using direct routing or operator connect, you're done. Move on. Click Save Changes. In my environment, I do not have direct routing or operator connect and we choose to use Microsoft Teams calling for our telephony. So I will now assign a Teams domestic calling plan and click Save Changes. I have now created a resource account that can sign in to Teams rooms, but there's a little more to it. Now let's see what more we can do in the graphical user interface of all of this. 
before we bomb out to PowerShell. I say bomb out, it's not as, it, it has negative connotations until we exploit the power of PowerShell. How's that? Um, Town View Conference Room 8, this is our guy. So what can we do within Exchange? I can uh, put in some street address stuff here if I would like. I would not like to because I don't need to. Some additional information, this is useful. So this here, this uh, tags audio device display and video and uh, wheelchair accessible, it's kind of hidden up here. Those are for room finder. So within Outlook, the ability to help you find an available conference room. This is also for uh, seeing the devices on a team's panel. So uh, we're starting to spin off into out of scope of this video category, but just briefly on team's panel, you can put a little button. People can tap it and see what is inside the room without having to walk into the room. So I could put in like dual monitors. Uh, you can put anything in here. This is free text. So do what you like. I'll just put dual monitors in here for now. And it is saving this. I, I also ticked the uh, that, that this room is wheelchair accessible. So, okay, that's been updated successfully. Automatic automatic processing. This is what we just saw uh, when we created the resource account. So allow repeated meetings only during work hours. Um, we can do delegates 180 uh, 180 day window the uh, 180 days right the and our 24 hour maximum duration. We can type a message here. So this is. When the conference room accepts the meeting invite, it will send an RSVP back to the organizer. And we can put a message in here like for room support call 1-812-555-1212 or something. So, we, so that way the organizer can get some support. Now I'm going to show in PowerShell how we can do um, a bunch of HTML and send back... Um, send back an email with graphics and hyperlinks and things like that. But for just a simple use case, this is fine. We'll put that in here, click save. So it saves that attribute and again, delegates. So sometimes you have a high security room or high priority room that the average employee should not be allowed to book. You would disable auto accept in that scenario. So we would go into the manage settings. I would untick auto accept. And instead I would put in the name of a delegate or someone who can then manually accept those meeting invites. I'm gonna keep it at auto accept, just X out. So this is how you can do things on uh, creating a resource account using the user interface, the graphical user interface. There are some things we have to do via PowerShell. So I will come back uh, here in a second with PowerShell and we'll go through that. All right, uh, I have Windows Terminal started. I use Windows Terminal for PowerShell. There is a built-in PowerShell into Windows 10 and Windows 11 and Windows all of them, but I like uh, Windows Terminal because it, it's a little uh, more user-friendly, I think. Some of the keyboard commands are used to using in regular apps work inside the terminal. If you don't know how to get it, I've got uh, the Windows Store or the Microsoft Store. I guess we're calling it the Microsoft Store now. I, I search for Windows Terminal up here, click on Windows Terminal, and then uh, you may have an install button. I have an open 4.6 ratings. That's pretty good. So that's what I use. The other thing is to make sure you start this as an administrator because we're gonna to need to install some PowerShell modules. So one way to do that is to click on settings go to Windows PowerShell and run this profile as administrator and click save. I will click save like three times, X and uh, uh, do you wanna close all tabs? Yes, close all. And now I'm going to restart Windows Terminal and we should now be as administrator, as it says up here, administrator colon Windows PowerShell. First thing I do, uh, we all need to do is to enable the running of scripts. We're going to need to enable this to install PowerShell modules. What are PowerShell modules? Modules are uh, tools that extend the instruction set of PowerShell to talk to things like Exchange Online, Azure Active Directory, and Microsoft Teams. So first thing I'm going to do is set my execution policy to unrestricted. Please read up on the set-execution policy commandlet because unrestricted may be a little too liberal for your tastes. I'm now going to install the Exchange Online Management PowerShell module. So this will let me connect to Exchange Online and do things like creating an Exchange resource account. I will now connect to Exchange 
and it's going to load up that module. It's going to bring up this window. Let me bring it on screen. Uh, this is my account. So I'm going to sign in to my Microsoft 365 account that ostensibly has access rights to Microsoft Exchange. There it is, installing some commandlets, and I'm good to go. And I can now run my one command. And again, we've already created the calendar, uh, the resource account, right? We've already done that. So what we need to do now is set some attributes on that uh, account. So I'm going to paste a bunch of PowerShell in here, and then I'm going to talk about what this is. We're going to set the processing. So as a calendar entry comes into Exchange, we're going to process it based off what? So first thing, identity. So here's the uh, email address of my new conference room eight. Uh, we already did this, so it's a little redundant, but automate processing is auto accept. So that's automatically accept any meeting invites. Add organizer to subject is false. If you set this to true, it overwrites the subject of the meeting with the name of the organizer. So instead of having a meeting called like weekly team meeting, it would say Adele Vance. Uh, good for security. That way there can be data leakage based off the name of a meeting. So if you're worried about that, set that to true. But in almost every case, eh, you'll set this to, to false. Delete comments. So in the body of the meeting invite, there could be other text. Sometimes that can lead to data leakage. We recommend to leave that uh, as set as false because we're going to need this for third party meeting join. So if someone forwards a Zoom or WebEx meeting to this calendar, Delete comments will delete <laughs> those comments, which is the meeting join information. So for third party guest join, direct, uh, go, yeah, third party meeting join, we want to keep that that way. Delete subject. So this is if the if the subject of the meeting is weekly team meeting, delete it and have nothing. Uh, when there's nothing, it usually gets replaced by the organizer. Process external meeting messages to true. We need this also again for the third party uh, direct guest join. When you forward a meeting invite from Zoom or uh, Cisco, it'll come from like zoom.us or webex.com, not from your domain, right? Not from contoso.com or in my case, teamsdeviceslab.com. By default, uh, Exchange rejects meeting invites that do not come from your domain. So like teamsdeviceslab.com in my case, or contoso.com in the generic Microsoft case. If we leave this as false, we will not be able to join Cisco, WebEx, or Zoom meetings. So we're going to set this to true. Remove private property. So if the meeting is flagged as private, uh, remove it. No, well, we won't do that. And we're going to add an additional response. And this is I showed in the GUI section where I said, you know, for additional support, call 1-812-555-1212. In this case, the additional response, I guess I'm going to overwrite it and say this is a Microsoft Teams meeting room. I will hit enter and we're going to set these attributes. Next thing we need to do is set the password to never expire. Again, these are accounts on shared devices. If the password expires, people won't be able to use the device. They won't be able to join meetings or like use Teams display hot desking. So we need to install another module. We're gonna install the Azure Active Directory module. I'm gonna say yes to all. I trust that repository, so let's get that sucker installed. And once that's installed, we're going to do just like we did for Exchange Online and connect to the Azure AD module. So there's my connect Azure AD command, which will then prompt me to sign in in case I have different credentials. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, I'm connected. So now I can run my one command. I'm using Azure AD for graph, I think is what it's called. There's also the Microsoft Online, which is an older version that works just as well. So let me now paste in my commandlet here, which will uh, set the password to not expire. Uh, see, copy and paste, that's what we use terminal. It asks us if we want to do that. And there we go. So set Azure AD user. Here's my conference room eight and the password policy is disable password expiration. Now we're good to go. The other things you might wanna do is assign a phone number if it's enabled for, for a phone number. I am, I'm not gonna show that right now in this video, how to assign phone numbers, because there'll be a dedicated video later on how to assign phone numbers.